Hi everyone, it's Darlene. Welcome back for another card video. Today's card is for the January challenge where I have three cards that I've made previously up for inspiration. And this is the one that I chose to recreate. It's a split background, so all you need to do is just create a background and split it up. So, let's get started. I'm going to be using this Sketched Roses background stamp by Impression Obsession. You could use any background stamp or you could even create your own background with multiple stamps and go from there. So I'm going to uh, adhere this to an acrylic block upside down just because it's easier to work with background stamps that way. I've got a piece of four and a quarter by five and a half inch Strathmore watercolor paper. I'm going to ink up my stamp with some Versamark uh, ink. It's just a sticky ink that will take some embossing powder. When you're working with your background stamps upside down, you can always put a piece of scratch paper on top and just apply pressure all around to make sure you get even coverage. So I'm going to sprinkle some of this clear embossing powder and I'll heat it to set it. And now I'm ready for some watercolor. I'm going to be using three distress inks. The first is worn lipstick. The second is scattered straw. And the third is picked raspberry. So I'm going to put each of those on my craft mat. I'm going to grab a glass of water and a brush. This brush is made by Low Cornell. It's an ultra round brush number six. And since I'm going to be covering the whole cardstock with watercolor, I'm going to start off with a mist of water. So I'm going to liberally spray the whole cardstock with water and then I'll just kind of get it prepped for my watercolor. I really don't like to secure my watercolor paper down. Um, because I'm just too lazy. <laughs> so I just poke it down with my paper piercer and after a minute or so, the paper's not curling anymore and so I just let it go. I'm gonna do one flower at a time. I'm gonna start with the worn lipstick and color the center of this one flower. Then I'm gonna grab some of the scattered straw and color around the worn lipstick and I'm gonna overlap them just a little bit. It's really easy when you have the embossed image because it kind of contains the color into their little compartments. Um, and after I'm done with the scattered straw, I'm gonna grab more worn lipstick and color all the way around the edge. And the reason why I ended up putting worn lipstick around the outside is because I felt like it was a little bit more defining for the rose. If I ended on the yellow, it would just kind of all blend together. I wouldn't re really be able to see each individual rose. And uh, then for the center, I'm gonna take my picked raspberry, which is much darker, and a little bit less water, and I'm just gonna drop that into the center, uh, those little center pieces in the rose. So I decided to move in a little bit so you can get a closer look at how I'm doing this. So this is the worn lipstick, and this is all in real time, by the way. Here's my scattered straw, and I use this color because I love the yellow. It's just so subtle. It's not like the lemonade, the squeezed lemonade, which is really bright and striking. This is a much more subtle yellow, and so I end up using it on a lot of flowers. And then I'm gonna end with my worn lipstick here. You can see where they overlap a little bit. You're getting a little bit of an orange tint, but because the scattered straw is a very subtle yellow, you're really not getting any bright orange. It's all very soft and pretty. So it's a little hard to see some of these uh, roses individually because they all sort of run together and that's the look of the background. Um, but if you kind of look to the side and just sort of guess, it doesn't have to be exact since the edge of the flowers are all gonna be the same color. So if one gets colored um, before another, it's no big deal. And you can always go back and change things too. That's the beauty of the watercolor. So I'm gonna grab a little bit more of that raspberry and just drop it in. You can see how pretty that looks. So I'm just dropping it into the little areas in the center. I chose this brush because it has a very fine tip and it will allow me to drop little bits of color where I need to. Notice that I am skipping flowers in between and that's so that I don't have any issues with colors blending together because they're still wet next to each other. So I'm just gonna jump around as I color this background. So I'm gonna speed this up quite a bit. It's about uh, two minutes worth of coloring if you'd like to fast forward. Otherwise, just sit back, relax, and I'll be back in a couple of minutes.
And that is the end of the watercolor. So I'm going to let this dry. I actually ended up letting it dry overnight because I got distracted by other things. So uh, I'm going to come back the next day here and I'm going to trim off an eighth of an inch from the two sides that I like the least. Uh, and that's because I want a one sixteenth of an inch all the way around the card. So I'm just going to cut off one eighth on each side. And now it's time to cut my pieces. And I decided to do a big one, a medium one, and a small one. So the, f the first segment is going to be two and a quarter inches. So I'm going to mark that with a pencil. And then I'm going to move my ruler over one sixteenth of an inch and I'm going to mark that. Then my next segment is going to be one and three quarters inches. So I'm going to mark that with my pencil. And then again, I'm going to mark one sixteenth of an inch next to that. And that's just so that I don't have to worry about figuring it out with my trimmer. My, my, uh, my sixteenth of an inch is already figured out for me. So here's my first segment and then I'm going to scoot it over just a little bit and I have my pencil mark and I'm going to go ahead and trim all these pieces out. And uh, I talked about this trimmer in the last couple of videos. I'm actually really enjoying this trimmer. It's really nice. Um, I'm really used to a rotary trimmer, so this has got that uh, triangular blade to it, which I didn't really like before I got my rotary, but I'm kind of liking it now. So stay tuned. I'll give you some more feedback about it. Anyway, when you cut these pieces, you want to make sure you actually are cutting out the 16th of an inch piece because you don't want to just cut them and then separate them. If you do that, you won't have the continuity of the design. Okay, so I've got the sentiment from Alta News Oriental Orchid set, and I'm going to split my thank you word, thank at the top and you at the bottom. So I'm going to cover the U with my surgical tape, ink it up with some Versamark uh, ink, and then I have my basil 40 pound vellum, which I love, it's the perfect thickness. And so when I stamp this down, I'm going to forget to take off that surgical tape, which is really bad news. So I don't realize it at the time. So once I put my embossing powder on there, you can tell I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> what is that? So I grabbed a paintbrush and I tried to scrape it off with a paintbrush, but then I accidentally scraped off some of the K. And so I'm like, all right, forget it. I'm just going to start over. So um, I inked it up again and I'm going to this time get it with some black embossing powder on it. There was some pieces that I'm not sure what happened. It was still sticky on the right hand side. So I just took my brush and I brushed away all the pieces that I didn't want to heat and that just works fine. So I brush that away and then I heat it to set it. Now if you have a Stampin' Up! heat tool it has two settings and what I do is I put it on the high setting and I hold it on the high setting for about a minute off you know off the cardstock and then I put it on the low setting when it's nice and hot and then I apply it to my vellum and it works great so it doesn't take very long to heat up. And so I'm going to just repeat this for the U. I put the surgical tape over the thank and now I've got my black embossing powder on the U and I did have to brush away some of the embossing powder from that as well and then I heat it to set up. And now I'm just going to trim the bottom so it's even at the bottom and the top. And then I'm going to grab my pieces. Now I want to make sure I don't make a mistake here. So I'm going to put them all on my card to make sure they're lined up in the right direction. I'm going to take my largest segment and I'm going to wrap this vellum around just really carefully and really press it really nice and tight with my fingers right around there. You could use a scoreboard and score it and fold it, but that would seem like a lot of work. So I'm just going to fold it by hand and I'm just going to trim off the edge on the back. And once I have that in place, I can then fold the other side. You want to do it when it's nice and tight, so you're holding it really tight on the right hand side while you wrap the left one around. And then squeeze it nice and tight with your fingers. And I didn't feel the need to adhere the front at all. So all I did was I took some HEG tape runner and I put it on the back and uh, then I just adhered the vellum to the back. You could hide some glue dots behind the sentiment if you really wanted to secure it into place, but I didn't think it was a big deal. So all I'm doing is just wrapping it around with some tape runner. And now I'll put my pieces on my card base. This is a Hero Arts four and a quarter by five and a half inch folded note card. I love these note cards because they're white on the inside, so I don't have to worry about doing anything to the inside for my message. Now the key here is to do the edges first. So I'm going to do my wide piece on the very right hand side and just make sure I have the same amount of black on the top, the right, and the bottom. Then I'll move to my left segment and do the same thing top left and bottom make sure they're all equal and then as long as you cut it right it should work perfectly right in the middle and just even it out on both sides 
and just press it into place. And that is the card for today. So I hope you enjoyed that and I can't wait to see what cards you create for this challenge. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.